and welcome to Exposing Truth Ministry for another health nugget. Today, we are fortunate to have Sister Carol with us again. Hello, Sister Carol. Today, you're going to talk to us about something important, something I don't remember hearing about as a child, but is quite popular these days. What are you going to be sharing with us about, Sister Carol? Hello. We're going to talk about nutrition today. And you're right, we don't hear too much about these particular words, micronutrients, what are they? But I, I understand when you say we haven't heard about them because when I was a child, which was a very long time ago, there were only five vitamins, A, two Bs, a C and a D. So if you look at a new book, how many vitamins do you find there now in nutrition? You find 13. And you find 16 nutritional minerals. So where did they come from? Are you confused? Well, they were really already there. They were always there. All has always been. So that's why I say, eat the apple. So micronutrients are vitamins and minerals. Our food contains them. They are stored in our liver, which is our chemical factory, until they're needed and used uh, to produce hundreds of roles that they have in our bodies to make our bodies work right. On Psalm 139, verse 14, first part says, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. We were created perfectly balanced. Not enough nutrients in our body suffers. Taking supplements, unless critically low or advised to take them, can cause excessive amounts and cause harm. So what can we do? We need to keep this balance. Let's first take a look at antioxidants, how much are enough. We all get concerned about antioxidants, and I am too. There's so many things that we can't control, like the air pollution and tobacco smoke and UV radiation, and then there's some that we can control like alcohol and fried foods. But the best way to get antioxidants is from food. And you can see by this list here that there are many things that are very high in antioxidants that if you include them in your diet uh, at various times, because we need that variety, you're going to be protected. And that's what we should do. We should use our food to do that. Both vitamins and minerals come from our food. Our body can't make them. Our minerals are taken up from the soil in the plants. So why are we deficient? Well, here's three words that will kind of give you a clue. Additives, soil depletion, and processing. We hear those words often when we're talking about gardening, for sure. And microwaving doesn't help. It kills practically all the nutrients in the food. Uh, foods that are not food, like lunch meats, hot dogs, fake meats, and then cooking and storing food also compromise the nutrients. So it makes us tempted to take supplements. Now, this next thing on the screen is a warning, and you'll see it over and over because it's very important when it comes to minerals. Too much can be just as harmful as too little. So be very mindful of what your body needs and don't just indiscriminately decide that you need to have this vitamin or that mineral. Let's talk about the water soluble vitamins first, um, the Bs and the C. Their major task is to produce energy, build proteins and cells and make collagen. Your body does store water soluble vitamins uh, for a few days and B12 it stores for years. We're moving on to number two, fat-soluble vitamins, which are A, D, E, and K. Think time release when you think about these vitamins because they're, they're fat-soluble, which means they take a different amount of time to process and therefore they last longer in your body. And their major job is to release the energy from the food we eat. And there are a few other things that they do also like protect our vision, build our bones, and E, which we know is an antioxidant. Moving on to major minerals, which I have listed out there, their major task is to maintain proper water balance in the, bo in the body. Also to keep the bones healthy, 
and sulfur stabilizes protein structure. Now, just to give you an idea, out of the minerals that we have for the nutritional uh, minerals, 30% are sodium, 50% are chloride. That only leaves 20% for the rest of the major plus all the trace minerals. So you can see that most of them are in very small amounts. So let's talk about the trace minerals for a moment. They're just as essential as the major minerals. And you can see the list there of, of some of them because there are much more than what I've listed here. And examples of their use are iron gets oxygen to where, it, where it's needed in the body and fluoride strengthens bones, including teeth. Not sure about the cavity part though. You'll have to search that out for yourself. Zinc clots the blood, first boosts the immune system and essential for taste and smell. Copper is needed for enzyme production and hemoglobin. And you can see that those are very important things and yet it's just a tiny little trace mineral. The difference between just enough and too much is often tiny. Generally, food is a safe source for trace minerals, but if you take supplements, it's important to make sure that you're not exceeding safe levels. Here's a way to help protect your body. Starting small yields large results. Buy organic. That can help a lot. We're going to move on to growing. Um, but some people are just not in a position where they can do that. So organic food is a good choice for those folks. Grow as much of your food as you can. If you haven't gotten moved to the country yet, uh, the amount may be small, but the result can be great. You'll learn all of the things that you need to learn, the soil nutrients and how to plant and how to control pests and water management. So even if you're doing Car gar or container gardening or have a very small garden, you can still learn those things. And if you live and can move or move to the country, start a garden that you can manage with food you like to eat. Over time, as you're able, you can increase the size and variety of your garden. You will build and replenish the soil. This will give you confidence that the nutrients are available for your plants and for your nutrition. And besides that, you'll have the plus of fresh produce, and you can't duplicate that. Here's a little historical note, little history. During World War II, food was rationed. You were issued coupons to exchange for the item on the coupon. Supplementing your food with a victory garden was encouraged by the government. My grandfather worked for the government, so his job was secure. But those days, money couldn't buy food sometimes. My grandmother, she was always a city girl. She started and maintained one of those victory gardens. And she, and she kept it going throughout the war. And if she can do it, so can you. The very best way to know you are getting proper nutri nutrition is to eat well. Eat organic. Eat at least 50% raw. And eat a variety of food. Our spiritual lesson for this week is remember that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. God has made us and made our food. The food has everything in proper proportion for our body. Eat like you were in Eden. Eat raw and eat a variety of foods. Don't worry about the micronutrients. Just eat the apple. Just eat the apple. Amen. I like that. Thank you so much, Sister Carol, for sharing with us. Did you know about micronutrient before? Have you been doing it? Have you been getting your micronutrient? I like the warning that you give. You know, there's actually, you see, a thin line between too much or too little, but the best place to get this is from our food. I want a picture garden. Don't you? Let us know in the comment below. Have you been planting your own food? Let us know and let us know any garden tip that you can. Uh, that you know that as well. Remember to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell to know when a new health nugget is available. Carol, thank you so much for coming and I hope you'll stop by again. God bless.